Hey, this is Derek Watley with the Automation Broker team at Red Hat. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can use the broker in a restricted network environment by sending outgoing data through a squid proxy. We've recently added support for this feature to CAD ASB, which is our tool for deploying OpenShift and the Automation Broker inside of a development environment. To begin, let's open up config slash myvars under CAD ASB and edit a new variable called ec2 underscore use proxy so that it is set to true. This will configure CAD ASB to automatically deploy a squid proxy instance and set our OpenShift instance up to send outgoing traffic through it. Next up, we'll do a run create infrastructure command inside of ec2 minimal. This will start spinning up all of our AWS infrastructure. Here we can see on screen that an EC2 instance is being created for the squid proxy. And now that the proxy EC2 instance has been created, we're also going to create a special OpenShift instance configured with security groups that force traffic to be routed through the squid proxy. So now we have an EC2 instance for our squid proxy that's allowed to access the internet freely. And we also have an EC2 instance that will be the home of our OpenShift instance that is restricted to only sending outgoing traffic through the squid proxy. Here we can see that the squid proxy package is being installed on our squid EC2 instance. And now that that is completed, we see that the squid.conf file containing our example settings is copied over and the squid proxy is restarted. Now it looks like the process has just finished setting up the system-wide proxy for the OpenShift instance by editing the Etsy environment, uh, environment variables file. And it's also restarted the OpenShift instance to pick up those changes. And next up, we're going to see that the Docker service is configured in Etsy sysconfig Docker to pick up the same proxy settings. In all of these places, we're configuring the HTTP proxy, HTTPS proxy, and no proxy variables. Now, if you look closely at the debug statement that's on screen right now, you can see that our OC cluster up command specifies an HTTP proxy and an HTTPS proxy parameter as recommended by the documentation. So once OC cluster up completes, you should see in this process that we're creating a broker proxy config object. You can see that in the middle of the screen right now. So essentially that is a config map inside of the automation broker project that's going to be injected into the broker's container uh, using the deployment config. You can see that we patch the broker's DC or deployment config to reference that config map. And we restart the broker to pick up the change and the end result of this is going to be that the automation broker will have access to those same proxy vars in its environment variables. So now CAD ASB has finished setting up our environment and we're going to take a closer look at what actually happened on the configured OpenShift instance. So now we're SSH'd into our OpenShift EC2 instance and I'm taking a look at some of the proxy settings that we have in our environment variables. Specifically, we can see that we have HTTP proxy and HTTPS proxy set to the same value and no proxy is set to something unique. It Basically, no proxy is telling the machine that it shouldn't use a proxy when connecting to localhost, the loopback interface, uh, .cluster.local, the .service subdomain, uh, and also the Docker network, which is 172.17.0024. To see where these variables came from, we're going to look at some files on the system, starting with Etsy environment, which is a system-wide environment variable file. You can see that we set not only the lowercase variables, but also uppercase versions of them, because as it turns out, different programs across the system will 
default to looking in either the lowercase or the uppercase, sometimes both, but it's not consistent. So it's safest to have both of those set. And the next file we're gonna look at is our etsy sysconfig docker file, which contains docker name and configuration. And we also have to set our proxy values here. However, you only have to use uppercase for these values because docker looks at the uppercase version. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our OC project command. It says that we're on the Ansible Service Broker project. We're gonna get the config maps available in this project and we see that there's one called broker proxy config corresponding with what we saw in the Ansible playbook earlier when we were setting up our environment. Let's take a look at this config map. We see that it contains HTTP proxy, HTTPS proxy and no proxy values as we've been accustomed to seeing. And if we look at the deployment config for ASB, we see that in this file we have defined an env from value on our container for ASB. And this is under that you have a config map reference pointing at the broker proxy config. So it's actually pulling in all the values from that config map and inserting them as environment variables on the broker's container. So now the broker has the proxy variables in place so that it can reach out to external endpoints on the internet if it needs to establish API credentials, or maybe if you wanted to provision a service on AWS, that will be possible now. But let's say you want your application that you deploy with the automation broker to be able to access the internet on its own. In this case, we need to use either a proxy configuration APB that will bind to our application container, or we can build the proxy support directly into the APB. I'll show you both approaches here. Starting with an approach that doesn't require you to modify your existing APBs at all. Let's go ahead and deploy a photo album to the proxy with bind project. And we'll also deploy our proxy configuration APB that I mentioned to this project. This allows you to provide proxy configuration to your containers as bind credentials. So there's two plans for this. One of them is to pass the broker proxy settings through and the other is to provide custom settings. In this case, we'll just pass through the settings we already have in the broker and we'll add it to our project and create a secret for later use that will contain those proxy settings. Finally, we'll deploy an external cat API APB. This will reach out and get an API key for the cat API. And because the broker already has proxy settings, this won't be a problem. Um, we have to create a secret for this as well. And now we'll just head to the project overview to wait for all of these to finish provisioning. And then we can connect our two sets of bind credentials with our demo app. So now the album is finished provisioning and we can visit the URL and see that the API has not been loaded yet. This is because we haven't bound it with our cat API yet. So to start with, let's go to the secret. It looks like it's not quite finished creating yet. There it is. So we'll click view secret and we will add that to our application. In this case, it's called demo app, which is the photo album. That will add the API key, the secret, and URL to our demo app, which is now redeploying with that new information. However, when it redeploys, it's still not going to be able to display the photos because it tries to reach out to that external URL to get a list of photos to display on the web page. And this connection will be denied because it's not going through the proxy yet. It looks like the second revision of the app just started up and we're gonna take a look again at the random album URL and see if it has the API key. So it looks like it does have a key now, it's not displaying that message, but when it tries to reach out on the back end of this application to that cat API server and get a list of URLs, it's failing. And here's where we attach the proxy configuration. So we click view secret on the proxy configuration and it looks like it has all of our proxy values that we would expect. Add it to our demo application, just like we did with the cat API credentials. And once again, we'll wait for it to redeploy. Looks like it's just about ready, so we'll refresh our 
in the lab one more time. And this time we see a bunch of pictures of cats as expected. And we can be confident that our app is using the proxy information we provided to connect to the internet. So that was nice in cases where you don't want to modify your app, but it does add an extra step of needing to bind. The other approach is if you modify your APB to include a setting that will either pass proxy settings through or let you define them, then you can skip the step of needing to run that extra bind. So I'm doing the same thing here in a second project called proxy built-in. Notice I'm following the same exact steps, just leaving out the step of creating the proxy configuration APB. The cat API in the second project is just finished with creating its binding. So we'll view the secret here. You can see the API key is created and we're gonna add that to our demo app. So eventually that'll finish redeploying the demo app and we'll be able to refresh the page. And now once again, we see that we have cat showing up this time without having to do that additional bind step. So finally, let's take a quick look at the modifications I made to the photo album demo so that it could have that built-in proxy pass-through button on the parameter screen. I'm gonna look at my roles, provision, tasks, main YAML file. And you can see here that we, we're doing it, we're actually gonna do a similar process to what we did with the broker where we edit the deployment config. So here's the create deployment config for this photo album APB as it was before I edited it. And you can see that under the containers section, you have anything that you list an under environment this provided with a single environment variable will end up in the title. container as an environment variable. So we really just want to add those same few uh, proxy environment variables that we've been adding everywhere else. And to accomplish this, we're going to edit this deployment config by creating a secondary config map and injecting it into this container section using that same env from directive that we used before. So here we create a config map which copies all of the proxy related environment variables from the broker's environment over to this new container, the photo albums environment. The final step here is going to be to enable this proxy config config map on our container called demo app, which is actually the photo album, using this env from section of the config. And you can see here that we supply the proxy config as a name for the config map we want to include, which is matching up with what's above there. In case you're interested in trying this out or seeing how this particular APB works, I'll include a link below to this APB, and I'll also include a link to CAD ASB from which you can deploy your own EC2 environment with proxy enabled.